guys, welcome to episode 11 of the Chelsea career mode on FIFA 20. We had the Carabao Cup final special yesterday. If you missed it, check the channel page for it. Make sure you go and watch it in case you get spoiled in today's episode. Moving forward from there, this is going to be the last episode that I record ahead of time in bulk so that I can make sure that I get your feedback on board for spending the, uh, the transfer budget we have available before the end of the season. So I'm not going to record any further than today until I've seen at least up to yesterday's episode, if not including today's, so that then I can record moving forward for Monday, Tuesday and into the next week, etc. And then, of course, I'll need to wait again because I'll need your feedback for the new transfer window at the beginning of the new season. But we've still a little way to go in this, uh, in this season here. We've obviously the month of March here. And then the month of April, and then the month of May, and we may even need to, if we get through against Locomotive Moscow, split April into two, just in case we get through to the latter stages of the Champions League, and we don't want to be seeming too many games if uh, it's going to affect our overall performance in both competitions. Aston Villa still lead the way in the Premier League, although Manchester United could go back top again if they win their game in hand, with three points off Liverpool and level on points with Newcastle. Arsenal and Manchester City are slightly recovered, they're getting there slowly but surely. Brighton look doomed. But today we start with two simulated games. We'll sim Everton as that's a home game. Then we'll sim Bournemouth because I want to play Villa away as they're obviously the side that are at the top of the table and offer us the biggest test. Make sure we want to play the second leg against Lokomotiv Moscow with my strongest possible team. And then obviously Manchester City is a game that you always want to play for uh, for the sake of playing one of the strongest teams in the league, if not the strongest. So I, I'm not sure how this episode's going to go. The chance for Danny Drinkwater here, which I will... I'm tempted to just accept that straight off the bat. I'll negotiate, try and get a little bit more. Anything we agree now for players outgoing, we won't see that money until next season. So it will actually help boost our transfer window in the uh, in the second year. I'll ask for nine and a half, and if they'll come above 8.2-ish, then I'm quite happy to sell. They've not really offered me anything more there than, uh, than a 5% sell-on clause. And they'll pay eight and a half. I'm quite happy for Danny Drinkwater to go for eight and a half million. It's a player that I would never play. So it's just eight and a half million pounds extra than we didn't have before. But a game rescheduled. What's that for? A game against Aston Villa. Oh, the game against Villa has been moved this month. They must be doing something in the FA Cup. Well, that makes it easier with regards to squad rotation then for the game against Locomotive. So I was going to sim. Sorry, I was going to play this game with my... Uh, rotated 11 so that my first team were ready for the game against Locomotive Moscow. I can now play both games with my full strength 11. That's actually worked in our favour there. Uh, everybody is as it should be. Do we bring Rudiger back in? I'm questioning it. We'll leave it as it is right now, I think. Although I'm going to take Aspi off the bench and we will put Rudiger onto the bench. He's grown to 84 now, Rudiger. Yeah, I'm going to put Antonio Rudiger back in, especially for these uh, simulated games that obviously high-rated players have more of an impact. Still going to leave Dan James. Dan James. Um, Reese James in at right back. Tamori at centre-back. Mount and Tammy Abraham, etc. Loftus-Cheek is uh, still on the bench. Kovacic still there as well. He's grown up to 84 too. Loftus-Cheek's up to 81. Uh, Tammy's now 79. And still, I believe, the league's top goal scorer. So things are going well for us this season. We look like we're going to qualify for Champions League next year. We get a draw against Everton. And actually, lucky to come away with the point as Gilfie Sigerson missed a penalty in the 80th minute. So, well, uh, I'm actually quite... I just, I literally just played you, Antonio. Uh, I, you still have your place in the squad, is what I'll say. As he does. There's been a lot of call in the comment section for him to play more regularly than I've even been playing him so far. So uh, we will have to make sure we monitor his first team football. But I've just literally thrown him straight into the starting lineup when he played there against Everton. So uh, hopefully he's happy enough with that. We'll simulate the next game against Bournemouth as well. Manchester United now have two games in hand on Aston Villa. Scratch that. Manchester United have played both those games in hand and now are on 57 points. So they have themselves... A three-point lead at the top of the table. That could be cut to two if Liverpool win their game in hand and they go up to 55 points. So it looks like it's going to be a three-way fight for the Premier League title. And it's a four-way fight between ourselves, Spurs, Newcastle and the Wolves for that fourth spot. We do have a game in hand on Spurs. So it could go above them into fourth and go on to 50 points. But Wolves would still only be uh, four points behind us. But we are going to have to make sure we get a victory here against Bournemouth. Danny Drinkwater has been sold. He's gone. £6.5 million will be added to my transfer budget next year. That'll do. 
it's enough to be able to offer that basically should cover all sign-on bonuses for any signings we make next month. A 2-0 away win against Bournemouth is very pleasing indeed. That will put us back in a Champions League spot. Jorginho's happier again now that he's uh, been playing a little bit more football. I'm just going to say I expect more from you because uh, we need to ensure that his performances don't, uh, don't dwindle. We need to make sure that everyone is always constantly putting in their best performances. Pedro's wanting to play here. Sorry, Pedders. I'll say that now. I'll say there are bigger games ahead. I'm not wanting to play Pedro at this moment in time. He's not quite good enough. Don't really see a need to uh, go into the the uh, press conference here. The squad morale is actually actually maybe I should. The squad morale is only uh, only average at the minute. Let's let's attend the press conference and see if we can't boost uh, everyone's morale and make them play a little bit better. First question: Kovac. Of course, they talk about Kovacic. Um, rotation is key. God, they absolutely love Mateo Kovacic. After a recent win against Bournemouth, fans are praising expecting another win. Uh, any new strategies? Uh, it was a team effort against Bournemouth. High quality football. Thank you. It was a team effort. Everybody put in uh, their best possible performances. Your opponents are still very much in the tie. That goalless draw in the first leg. Are you confident your home crowd are going to uh, get the victory for them? Does playing at home give you a confidence boost? Yes, we've got every chance. We need to stay focused. I'm very confident that we can get the win we need. And indeed I am against Lokomotiv Moscow. And that's the final question. Right then, let's go and play Locomotive Moscow and get ourselves through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying, or by the end of the video you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any further content. Please do continue to stay up to date with the series and uh, follow me on the uh, links in the description to social media and to Mixer, etc. where I'm streaming. But for now, let's go and play Locomotive, Locomotive and get ourselves through. Locomotive's team is very, very similar to the one they played in the first leg. In fact, it's exactly the same, other than uh, Benedict Huberdez has come out at left back and Idowu has come in. So we know that the team is good, good enough to have held us to a nil nil draw in that first leg, albeit against my rotated 11. We'll see what my out and out first team now can do here in the round of 16 of the Champions League. It's winner takes all tonight, unless, of course, we have a score draw, in which case they'll go through on away goals. We need to avoid that uh, eventuality. Fingers crossed we can do that throughout the course of the next 90 minutes. Smolov. Always getting away from Tomori there. Foul is given. Advantage played. Rudiger with the block. Important stop from the German there. That was very, very necessary. William trying to flick that on towards Tammy, but... It's not worked, and Locomotive are creating the first opportunities of the game here. Jefferson Farfan down the right-hand side. Not as fast as he used to be, but certainly fast enough to cause us problems. And Ignatiev, or Ignatiev has pushed forward from right-back here and delivers a good ball in. And Pulisic had to track back there and win that header. We will get this away now, hopefully. Just be calm in possession, work it about, and ensure that they don't score and we can get forward on a counter-attack of sorts. Let's see, can we keep this move going? Mason Mount looking for Pulisic. No, foul is given, though. If we can take the... Free kick quickly. We could continue the flow of the move. Pulisic get that back inside there to Mason Mount. Arriving here is Jorginho. Willian's looking like he could get in behind. Although he's just run offside there. Try and play him in again here. We've done well. Willian drop the shoulder. Let Tammy get more into the middle. Across to the back post is decent. Headed away. Get to that with Kante. Oh, Mirantuk nips in ahead of Jorginho to clear it away. Right. Trying still to have... Actually, my first chance on goal so far in this game. There's Mason Mount. Oh, no, it's Pulisic. Sorry, Mason Mount was still central, further central. Pulisic with the turn. Here's N'Golo. Kante in the box. Kante! Over the bar. Really good opportunity. Not taken. Anubis Smolov looking over the top. That's easy to cut out for Marcus Alonso. Other than their effort earlier on this block by Rudiger, they haven't really been that good going forward, locomotive. Not exactly been much better myself, but certainly... We've uh, had a better opportunity thus far with that N'Golo Kante chance. Well, yeah, and can't get past Ignatiev. And we'll have to put the tackle in. Four minutes to go until half-time. Put the pressure on here. Trying to pin them into their own half. We've had that. Oh, if that touch had been better from Willian, we could have really made them pay for a defensive mistake. One goal for us. It doesn't really change their game plan really they know if they want to go through 90 minutes they've got to score so they can't sit back and just try and soak up the pressure and go to extra time and risk it on penalties I'd rather not risk it on penalties either because I'm not really that confident with a new penalty system and I've lost a game or two online on penalties so far this year I don't think we've missed one yet 
in this save. Oh, small or something, they're going to change the direction. Good save by Kepa. I don't think we've missed the penalty yet in this save, but certainly taking five in a row has caused me some problems uh, in online games. Morancic with the delivery and Pulisic away. We are going to be scoreless at half time, it seems. Yep, indeed we are. 45 minutes to try and go out and get ourselves a winner. Ido Wu inside to Kovia. Lovely ball through the gap to Rebus. Cross comes in. We'll win that with Marcus Alonso. He might not be as fast as uh, he used to be, Alonso, but certainly he's still as tall as he ever was, so he's a good aerial wing-back to have back there. Kante will look for Tammy here, and the touch is good. I need support, though, and it is arriving. We'll drill this out wide there to Willian. Try and drop the shoulder on the defender. That's not gone as smoothly as I'd hoped, but somehow we're in the box here, and I'll stand it towards the back post. Kante can knock this back into the middle, but he's not tall enough. Reese James will win that header. And it will drop here to Christian Pulisic. Use the acceleration. Whip the ball in. It's a good delivery. Choluca heads away. Putting on the pressure here at the beginning of the second half. But Lokomotiv Moscow defensively stand tall. And absorb the pressure. And now will come away to try and get themselves the winner that they're looking for. Alonso win the way but can't keep it in play. And now we're actually we're back for ourselves. Quite an open game this. Not quite been as dominant as I was hoping we might be to this point in the fixture. European games certainly seem to be a step up difficulty-wise from games in the Premier League. Jefferson Farfan will deliver this ball. It is looped dangerously to the back post, but Tammy's there defensively to get rid of it. Can Mason keep this in? No. Half an hour to play. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to take Mason Mount off, actually, and we'll uh, we'll bring on Ruben Loftus-Cheek in his place. Had a bit more f just physical power to that role, and I think other than that, I'm quite happy to continue on as we are. Half an hour to get a goal. Rubus down the line here to a Dowu. Cross quick on Reese James is with him and he's defended that really well. Marshalling the man into the corner. Idowu will take the throw. And we should win this. I wanted to change player to Kante then. Couldn't. Rudiger will get rid of that. Thank you. Ooh, I had a little bit of uh, worry there. That they might actually be sneaking a winner. William will pick that up. We'll drive into the space and continue to drive into the space. And Ruben Loftus seeks come off the bench here and he might immediately make the impact. Ruben gives us the 1-0 lead we're looking for. How is that for an impact? We needed a 12th man. Number 12, substitute number one. And Ruben Loftus seek might well have put us into the quarterfinals of the Champions League in our first season here at Chelsea. Running off the front man, burying it beautifully in front of the said end. And it's Chelsea... One, locomotive nil. Marinov into Smolov, drilled here to Jefferson Farfan. Lonzo sticks with him well. Keeper's going to come for that and get there. I would very much like a second goal just to get ourselves fully into the next round. At the minute we've got one foot in the door looking to get ourselves into that quarterfinal. One leg through the door into the driving seat of the car. The Champions League mobile. Oh, it's Ruben again. Loftus Cheek took a while to get it under control. It falls to him again. Oh, I'd like to get a second goal. There it is. We're into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Ruben Loftus Cheek might well have just earned himself a starting spot in this team. A brace from the bench. That will do, sir. They could give us a very nervy final few minutes if they scored there. We'll get Reese James around the corner here. Turns back nicely. Driving inside. Tammy's there. Ruben Loftus to see. He's on a hat trick, Ruben. Oh, gorgeous little turn there. And Angolo Kante running to the box. Oh, and he was going to try and turn and find Tammy. Couldn't quite do it. Two minutes added on. They can score now on this breakaway, but it still won't put them through. Locomotive Moscow. And they are going to have the opportunity before time runs out. Cross comes in. They might even. They have done. Can you imagine if I hadn't scored... That second goal, and they scored there, and you knew it was going to happen. As soon as the cross came in, and the defender got himself in front of the defender, which has happened so many times in career mode this year. It's one thing that I've been frustrated about with the gameplay. The defender's in front for the majority, and then just as the cross comes in, the defender just kind of switches off to the movement of the striker. The striker comes in, heads in in front of him, and the goal goes in. We've had that numerous times in the stream career mode, and uh, it's been really frustrating. I needed that second goal. I told you I needed that second goal. Chelsea 2, Lokomotiv Moscow 1. We are through to the next round of the Champions League. But 
it could have been one hell of a different story if it weren't for Ruben Loftus Cheek's introduction off the bench. He most certainly will start in the next game against Manchester City. Atletico Madrid might well have knocked Tottenham out. I'm not sure what happened in their first leg, and indeed they have. Spurs won 1 0 at home in their game. But Atleti are now through. Real Madrid versus Juventus at this stage of the competition is a massive tie. Liverpool 3, Dortmund 0, recovering from a 1 0 deficit. Manchester City beat Ajax 3 0 after drawing 2 2 away from home. Barcelona lost 1 0 away at uh, Hoffenheim, but win 3 0 at the Camp Nou. And Roma recover from a 1 1 draw to win 2 1 away at the Allianz. That's a big result. Some shock uh, results coming in in the Champions League, but ours was the way you would have expected it, but it was more difficult than we thought it was going to be. Uh, why didn't we get to... Will you please stop with the Kovacic? Why ask me this? With two goals to secure a win, Ruben Loftus-Cheek was a hero today. Uh, overall great, an impressive performance from Ruben Loftus-Cheek, most certainly. Uh, first of all, congratulations on qualifying for the next round. Next round, what are your immediate thoughts on the team's performance? We're efficient, and my players deserve all the credit. They did very, very well there. Ruben Loftus-Cheek certainly earned himself a start in the next game after that. Players leaving on international duty between now and the next game. But that's not a problem. We can deal with that. And well, unfortunately for Mason Mount, he's going to drop to the bench. And I'm actually... Just to shut the media up, going to show, co throw Kovacic in ahead of Jorginho for the next game against Manchester City, in which I shall cut to now. City starting 11, Edison in between the six at the back, Joao Cancelo, John Stones, Omeric Laporte and Benjamin Mendy. Three in midfield, David Silva, Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne. And then up top, as you would expect, Sterling, Aguero and Sané. That's an 11. Oh, ref, that's got to be a foul. Aguero pushes. Oh, good save by Kepa. Surely Aguero's just pushed Tomori over there. So it's a great hit from Aguero. A top save from Kepa Aretha Balaga, but should he have even had the opportunity to have the effort in the first place? Now, Pulisic could catch someone on the back foot here, although it is Raheem Sterling trying to close me down. Try and turn inside, though, and leave Raheem. Oh, I needed support to arrive quicker than that. We've had to go backwards. Oh, although Willian could get in behind here if he actually reacts to the football. And Loftus seeks the man in the middle. Ruben, the man of the moment. Ruben Loftus Sheik is at it again. We gave him the start at Cam. And he is grasping the chance with both hands. Chelsea 1, Manchester City 0. He's at it again. And inside there to De Buena. He's been well. He's been the informed player of the Premier League so far this season, Kevin De Bruyne. And David Silva blocked by Kovacic. The two introductions to this starting lineup for this game are making the difference. And Ruben on the breakaway could make it too. And has! A brace from the bench, a brace from the start. Ruben rocking Manchester City. You know, Sané looking to get in behind me here. Rhys James standing firm, but still not able to stop the German. Though he can stop the Belgian. And on the counter-attack we go. Tammy's there. Ruben off to seek still with me. Kante's continuing his run here. Well, no, it was meant for Tammy. Oh, that's infuriating. Tammy Abraham was in a great position. Absolutely brilliant position. Willian can't get past well. Cancelo, who's now defending very well indeed. Into Ruben off to seek quickly out of his feet to Mateusz Kovacic here. There's Tammy. Oh, can't get past that merit Laporte. Solid defending from the Frenchman there. Aguero cross to Leroy Sané. I don't know why I keep mentioning people's nationalities when talking about them. Here's Rodri the Spaniard to Leroy the German. And they still come forward. Oh, I'm not sure whether I got man or ball or both there, but Tomori has his challenge probably penalised a little bit later on by the referee and that's on its way in but Kevin makes the save and Tomori is now going to pick up a yellow card for that challenge I must not have gotten anything of the ball corners come in from Raheem Sterling on that far side City looking to recover the situation that's a terrible corner Kovacic flicks away but it's not the best of clearances Silva back down to Raheem Sterling David Silva again De Bruyne 
Where's he going to go? Oh, through there to Aguero. Oh, I tried to get there. They've swept me and it hasn't worked. That was the Pep Guardiola way, wasn't it? To square across the box in that situation. But on this occasion, it hasn't paid off for them. Still 2-0 Chelsea. Sergio Aguero. Trying to find some space, which he does. Marcus Alonso, thankfully, tracked the run from deep. And from out wide and followed the man into the middle. The one time where a, uh, a wing back tucking centrally actually works in favour for you rather than against you as it used to do with uh, Karim Oden defensive positioning. Here's David Silva. Tomori, I'm going to have to be careful with Tomori, you know, now to ensure that I don't get myself uh, a defender sent off. I've already lost the man to a red card. Actually, was it against Manchester City when Reese James got sent off? I think it might well have been, mightn't it? Reese James got a red card earlier on in the year and. I think that might have been against City because then didn't we play City in the cup and Otamendi got sent off for them not too long after that. So there has... I th I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that. So I think there's been a red card in every game that we've played against Manchester City so far this season. So hopefully we can avoid that scenario happening again. Here's Benjamin Mendy inside there to Sergio Aguero. Chasing the ball down tirelessly in Golo Kante as ever. It's a lovely turn by Leroy Sané. Lays across to David Silva and Manchester City are back in the game. 2-1 on the brink of half-time. A big second half coming up. Here's Rodri. Around the corner, but Pulisic cuts it off. I'm unsure as to what to do in this second half now. Do I push and try and look for a third and kill the game off like we did against Lokomotiv? But in the end, proved very, very important for us. Or do I try and sit on the 2-1 lead that we've got? The one goal lead that we've got. Like we had against Lokomotiv. And hope that we don't concede. In a similar fashion to the Russian uh, Champions League game. So I can sail around the corner here to Gura. I might not have an option. We might have our hand forced by City's aggressiveness. We might be pinned in uh, defensively, regardless of whether we make the decision to go ultra-defensive or not. We will have to seek around the corner here to Willian. City have the ability to be able to do that to you as a team. Kovacic through to Ruben Loftus cheek. Pulisic's on the far side. This could be a deadly counter attack here. We'll whip it, looking for Tammy in the middle. But Benjamin Mendy's gotten back to make a very important block, then clearance. Reese James wins the header. Kovacic through there to Ruben Loftus cheek. Oh, and he looked for Willian, but David Silva cut it out nicely. Well, the more I can do this and keep the ball at this end of the field, the more likely we are of getting the victory. But City will continue to throw bodies and the ball forward I'm sure it won't be long until they have clear-cut chances to get themselves that equaliser and you know even if they get the equaliser they're still not going to stop City never ever settle for anything but victory David Silva back there to Joao Cancelo Sterling and Joao Cancelo link up nicely displaced Oh, Marcus Alonso, but David Silva's header goes wide. I'm going to make changes. I'm not going to run the risk of Tamori getting sent off. I'm going to take him off. Bring Andreas Christensen on. I'm going to bring Ross Barkley on in the middle for, uh, for hudson Adoy For Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I'm going to bring Zorzinho on for Mateo Kovacic. Right. 20 minutes to hold on. Cancelo. Down the right. Zorzinho steps in. What he brought him off the bench to do, and Tammy's itching to get in behind John Stones here. They don't have electric pace in those centre backs. And we could try and isolate that. Tammy with the turn, and he's on on the edge of the box, and someone's arriving. It's Jorginho, well blocked by Ilkay Gundawan. They all in there nicely to Ross Barkley. Flick that around the corner. Reese James into the middle. All oh, Laporte brings it down rather than clearing it first time. If I'd have known he was going to do that, I'd have put a bit more pressure on him. Sterling, uh oh. Get there, please, Antonio. He's done enough, I think. Oh, I've failed Aguero there for sure. Sterling will continue on and give that straight to Alonso. Thankfully, the referee let play go on for long enough so that there was no advantage played. I think they should have been there. I should have taken a touch there rather than trying to play a risky pass. Benjamin Mendy's made a mistake there, though. Try and knock that in front of Ross Barkley. Oh, I've actually got Kante in the middle we could use here. A third would kill it. A third would really kill it. Tammy's made the run through that gap. Went that to go to Tammy. It went to Willian. I wanted to play it through that gap the way it went, but I wanted to aim it towards Tammy, a bit closer to the more central defender. It's just the, the passing system. Not really recognising where I wanted the pass to go more so than anything else. It's where manual passing would have come in handy. Emeric Laporte with the ball forward. Reese James can't react to it. Sané to Aguero across to this far side. 
Sterling brings it down and flicks it over his shoulder and he's made the one too. Great movement from Raheem Sterling. A decent ball in as well. De Bruyne brings it down. Aguero's there. Kepa saves. And I think there's an offside in there somewhere and it was for Sergio Aguero. They're making one final change. Benjamin Mendy off and Bernardo Silva on. They're going all out here. Manchester City. But is it too little too late? Just two minutes to go. And that's our throw. Waste time and we'll get three points. There's the final whistle. We've held on to it, and Ruben Loftus-Cheek has set this episode alight with his performances so far. Incredible from him. We have ourselves a 2-1 victory against Manchester City, a brace from Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and they were really the only chances we created in that game. Two shots on target, two goals for RLC. Spurs winning 1-0 against West Ham after half an hour, but that game is yet to finish. Well, at the press conference, Abraham is continuing his hot run of form. How satisfied are you with his performance today? It was okay, but we shouldn't get carried away. He hasn't scored for me in a play game for a while. Two goals from Ruben to see Again, another impressive performance from him. He's been superb today. You got your rematch against City. How did you prepare for this? Uh, we were just more determined to win, I guess. Really thrilled with the, the performance levels there. It was a slightly nervy second half with them scoring one back early door or at the very end of the uh, first half sorry but thankfully we were able to hold on tight and grab all three points tammy's growing nicely still get closer and closer to being 80 rated we are now looking more positive for that fourth spot aston Villa above us are only a point away as well maybe we'll even get third although all four sides do now go straight into the group stage from the uh, Premier League, so no longer does the fourth club go into the qualifying round. So we should hopefully, if we finish fourth, or we should, we will, if we finish fourth, go straight into the group stage of the Champions League next year. But that's our minimum aim, I think. Well, no, that's our minimum aim now. At the beginning of the season, I'd have been thrilled with the Europa League spot, but the way things have gone, actually really, really pleased with the, the situation we find ourselves in. And now we play Aston Villa for that third spot. Game on Tuesday. We've got game on the Friday as well. We've Roma in the Champions League knockout rounds in the quarterfinal. Probably will, yeah, probably will split that month into two. Because if we get through against Roma, well, I guess it depends what happens in those games. If we get through against Roma, the semis will be drawn here. I think at least one on the 28th, and then a further one in May. Maybe even back-to-back uh, -back weeks. It all depends on what happens against Roma. But right now we're concentrating on Aston Villa. Villa's starting lineup: Tom Heaton in goal for them. At the back, Gilbert, Chester, Mings and Duarte. Three in the middle again. Jack Grealish, Marvellous, Nakamba and John McGinn. With Trezeguet, Wesley and El Ghazi up top. I don't know how difficult it's going to be to defend against Wesley. He's been... Well, he was awful for me in the final career mode I did on stream with Aston Villa on FIFA 19. But he might be an entirely different animal on FIFA 20. Time will tell. Starting the same 11 here that played against Manchester City. Hoping that we can replicate the result. See Kovacic there free in the middle. It's a race away. Willian. He get free through that gap. Yes, he can. He deserves the opportunity to go for goal. And it's a smart save by Tom Heaton up high to his left. So sure we don't take the lead. William with the delivery. Tammy could be underneath this. Duarte is, annoyingly. That's not the best of clearances from... John McGinn, although I would have liked to have kept it in play. Miss James into Rudiger. Antonio Rudiger forward to Loftus Seek. Can he continue it on again? No, marvellous the Campbell with a superb defensive effort. Ten minutes played, and we are the more aggressive, more positive side so far. And good physicality shown by Trezegate to hold off Marcus Alonso. And there's Wesley. Foul was given there. They played advantage, or the referee allowed advantage and considered the effort from Wesley the advantage that was played. Could quite easily have given them a 1 0 lead there. Free kick for. Free kick. Corner for Anwar Al Ghazi to deliver. Wesley's underneath it. Flicks it on. Oh, it's going to squeeze in. No, Kante off the line. Wow. It went underneath the goalkeeper and very, very nearly squeezed over the line if it weren't for the alertness of Angolo Kante defensively. Stood there on the post. So we saw they didn't take the lead. They might still. No, Grealish anywhere but there, mate. And that's 1-0 Aston Villa. Wow. 
You can see thus far on their performance in the opening 25 minutes why they're where they are in the league, Villa. They've been very difficult to play against here. Ruben Loftus Cheek again forcing things offensively, but a poor, heavy first touch. Oh, on two occasions, mean that we won't get a chance on goal. We'll throw back there to Alonso. Squeeze it through that gap. No, we'll try again. Really fortunate deflection there. Pulisic. Bit of footwork from him, maybe. Christian Pulisic hasn't quite scored as many goals this season as we might have liked to have seen from him, but he smacked that home. We lead at Villa Park. What a finish. Great footwork, and that's where the acceleration really comes in handy. I think it's 94 acceleration he's got now, Christian Pulisic, and he's just driven around the outside. They got really lucky with Marcus Alonso on the far side, but getting away from the defenders there and a smart finish too. That's a good goal. Really pleased with that. We might well be going third in the Premier League today. El Ghazi again. James with him. Tries to drop inside. Oh, he's still got the cross in. How's he done that? Tomorrow he gets to it first. Thankfully, Pulisic will just make sure this goes away. Willian failed to really rise there. Wesley into Twesigate. Out wide to Gilbert, the right, the right back. And in the. Oh, where's it going to drop? Rudy could get rid of it. Oh, the keeper came for that and didn't get anywhere near it. That had me nervous. El Ghazi with the throw for Villa. Can they still cause something like Pulisic? Again, using that acceleration to his advantage. Whew. Very close to an equaliser for Villa. They've been so unlucky not to have scored so far in this game. With the one cleared off the line in the first half. Now that opportunity where the keeper's come and not gotten there and perhaps fumbled it almost into the path of one of their men. And Tammy perhaps actually could have gone a little bit further there. I got... Further past the defender than I thought I was going to after I made the decision to commit to the shot. Pulisic into Tammy here. Turning. Oh, defenders all around me. And Chester clears. We haven't kept a clean sheet so far in today's games. But with the way this one's going, I don't think I'm going to be getting any more than one goal. So I'm going to have to keep a clean sheet if I want to get victory. And we might not be Wesley. Oh, calm down, Wessels. In there to El Ghazi. Squared to Grealish. And Tamori's in the way. We have been so lucky not to concede in this game so far. I cannot believe that we haven't let one in. Henry Lansbury's coming off the bench here for Jack Grealish. How on earth have we still got a zero in the Aston Villa's goal score column? I genuinely can't tell you. They've tried squaring it and sweating me. They've tried corners. They've tried going out wide. They've tried going through the middle. It just will not go in for them. Painful day for the Aston Villa front line and Kante could finish them off here. No, what a save from Tom Heaton. It's really well worked by the Chelsea forward, Tammy Abraham. But oh, that would have been really, really harsh on Villa to go 2-0 down. I certainly don't deserve a 2-0 lead. Villa, if they get a point, will 100% have earned it. But it's just not seeming like it's going to go their way today. If that allows us to move up into third in the table and give us a better opportunity finishing in a Champions League position this year, then I'm sorry, but I'm very happy for that to happen. Nine minutes to go, eight minutes to go between us and the final whistle. Will it work for Villa or will it not? Cheek to Kante. Out to Willian. Tammy's there. Oh, it could be Ruben again. It could be Ruben Loftus-Cheek again. It's not. It might well be still. Oh! <laughs> it nearly ended up as an own goal. The yellow card for Wesley for something that I can't remember happening. And now we've got a corner. El Ghazi goes off and they make a change out wide. Willian's cross is going to be far too close to the keeper. Although he can only punch it up. Win that Christian. He has done. Tammy. Oh! Now they've cleared off the line. Tammy again. Is that bouncing in? No, it's bouncing over. Oh, this game has been unreal. Two to go. Oh, and this through ball has completely cut my entire defence apart. Our Aston Villa are about to get the point they deserve. No. Saved by Kepa. Huge. In the fight for the top four, that one save might have earned us Champions League football for next season. There's three points here against a fellow top four rival. Kepa's come to tip that away as well. That's massive. It's absolutely massive from Kepa Aritha Balaga. That might well be the biggest victory of the entire season. And my God, did we have to work for it. And my God, did we not deserve it either. Oh, Aston Villa will feel hard done by. But we'll take the three points. We'll move third in the Premier League. And that should hopefully assure us Champions League football for next season. Oh my God, that was nerve-wracking to say the least.
Despite the win today, Alonso didn't hit the form you expect of him. Uh, I think that's a bit harsh, but he can bounce back for sure. He's probably not going to be playing for us for much longer, so I don't want to be too harsh on the kid. You were able to secure victory before half time. Are you pleased with how things went in the second half? Um, we should have put the game beyond doubt. I mean, we should have put the game beyond doubt. We should have scored a second and we weren't able to. You won again. Do you think Aston Villa played well? Uh, there's no stop against the lads did it. Not as, not as well as us. I mean, the lads did it. They did play better than us, but the lads dug deep. Despite a better... But it wasn't a poor performance from us. It was just a better performance from them. Despite their good performance, we were still able to get the three points. Uh, monthly report is coming in. We've got a couple more scout reports as well. 75 to 94 now for Ike Schmitz. He's six foot. I'll say yes for now. We'll see what he looks like. I can always remove him later. We don't want to run the risk of him signing for someone else like we uh, unfortunately saw happen with the Ivorian youngster. And I'll give that one more month just to see if that 69 to 94 for Nils Muller actually closes at all. Uh, Mason Alexander... A right back, but £375,000 at 17. We'll wait and see. We'll see what he looks like. Uh, £350,000 at 17. Six foot four, might be a decent centre back. We'll wait and see what those Englishmen look like. Uh, no, not starting at 60 grand, sorry. 170, no, it's not stand out enough, I don't think. Let's have a quick look then at those youngsters that we've got now, see how they're growing. Oh, but Schulter, 87 to 93. He's going to be world class, apparently, by the time he's finished growing. So we could certainly start to consider training him next season. You'll have to let me know, A, obviously, what what you want me to do with the money I've got left over now, but we've been building up to that in the, uh, in the questions I've been asking you in previous episodes. But next season, and I'll reiterate this at the beginning of a new season, do I start to concentrate on these youngsters, or do I continue to concentrate on the youngsters we've been prioritising this season? That's going to be the decision we're going to have to make. Marcus Bergman, 85 to 91 potential for him. Still looking like he's going to be a really good player. Mason Alexander, it's not that fast, unfortunately. We'll wait and see how he develops. Ike Schmitz, six foot. I'm still unsure about him as CDM. We'll wait and see. Torben Zimmerman, 80 to 90 potential. So still looking like he might be decent, even though he's only 49 rated. Jamie Shaw, 86 to 94. He's going to be top, top quality. Uh, Frank Vandenberg, 80 to 86 as a CDM. Looking like he could be decent. 71 stand tackle already as well. Daniel Kone, 82 to 94. He's going to be great. Eve Kamara, 86 to 94. He's going to be world class. Bradley Cooper, 67 to 91. He's actually really, really strong physically. 81 jumping is certainly going to be used as a centre back. It's very rare that the wing backs come back actually as good wing backs. They always tend to be tall and have better jumping and look like they're going to be better centre backs, which is a real shame. Maybe we could pass that feedback on to EA. Torben Hoffman, uh, his potential is 80 to 94. I'm unsure if he's actually going to be worth it and used to sprint 65 to 83, although does look better physically for a wing back role. Although his jumping and strength still and height still lead you to believe that perhaps he'd be better used as centre back. Maybe we'll. Um, We'll wait and see. I might not scout any more youngsters from the end of this season because we've got such a number there already. But we'll wait and see how things develop. We are now third in the Premier League. Liverpool lead the way. Villa tailing off now down to fourth. Manchester United can go back top by two points if they win both their games in hand. We've seven games to go in the Premier League. We're in third. Spurs can go up to 54 points level on Villa if they win their game in hand. Wolves still aren't out uh, of a shout of European football but it is looking more like Europa League for them now than anything else and next month is going to be busy it's going to be really busy we shall play West Ham, we'll play Roma and we'll play Roma and then see what happens after that, but for now that's all for today, thank you very much for watching I'm not going to record that next episode until you've seen everything that we've uploaded so far, so I'm recording Sunday's video here on Thursday so I want to make sure I get all of your feedback before I commit to making signings for the end of the season. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.